So uh, we're live and I'm kind of just getting used to this, um, but I wanted to get on and kind of share a, an experience um, live. And what we're gonna do here is actually bring on um, one of my favorite people, uh, and one of my favorite clients, his name is Andrew. And um, we are going to actually kind of go into it. And I'm gonna share something um, that I would like to share that has to do with how do we find our authentic yes? How do we find our authentic no? And you know, it's all about making these divine clear, discerned choices. You know, every bit of life has to do with these choices. And so one at a time, we sort of create our path and we step forward and then we feel what that feels like. Oh, I made this choice. I have now this experience. And um, I'm of the, the mindset that this life is about having experiences and each choice gives us a different one. It gives us a new one. It gives us a, a, a perspective. And in that experience, what we have is this, 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 you know, 360 degrees all the way around experience of being, B-E-I-N-G, being. And when we are in that beingness, we're hopefully <laughs> embodied, right? All of us is here, grounded. Uh, and, and in opposition, what can happen is we can be dis excuse me, dissociated. We can be uh, disembodied, sort of, um, you know, out to lunch. And the idea is that when we actually say yes to something that we don't really have a yes to, um, there's a part of us that, that isn't there, that can't be there 100%. And when we show up somewhere not fully present, that has an impact. It has an impact on, on us on our being, and it has an impact on others. It has an impact on the environment. So it's all too common that we do this. It's, it's all too readily used, right? To just kind of go, go in there and trudge through and, and be where we don't wanna be. It's a lot less common to actually decide, I don't really have a yes for that. And okay, maybe I'm just gonna go ahead and say no, or I'm gonna you know, bow out politely. And one of the things I find is that most people think that when they say no, they have to have an explanation as to why. And when we do that, oftentimes what, what we get is somebody then trying to rebuttal our why. Oh, well, if you don't, if that's why, well, I can make this happen for you and then you can say yes, right? And maybe that's a good thing if you're open to some sort of, um, you know, working together with that person, then you can present it that way. You can say, well, I don't really want to, but if this part was, you know, more flushed out, then maybe I could say yes. Like there's room for that. But oftentimes we're, we're just feeling no and, we're skipping over that no. And, and in order to eliminate that tendency, which a lot of us have, it's imperative to practice listening to what is that centered, you know, like if I'm, I'm drawing this kind of like cross section and right in the center of there is our healthy yes like solid, yes. And we can move all of us forward into that 
experience and 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 then experience it from there and then once we you know have that yes and we go in we can then see how we feel from there um and sometimes we just need to experience things in order to know and and once we're in it then we can kind of go where am i in this and say next time that comes along i think i might choose differently so always covering all the bases that's me um so what I'd like to do is um, allow Andrew to go ahead and say hello. I'm gonna ask you to unmute and um, come on on, Andrew. Hello, can everyone hear me okay? Can you hear me okay, John? I can, hello. Thanks for, thanks for um, exploring this with me today. Absolutely. So, as I was think, as I was just speaking, I realized that actually the last session we had, you were exploring your yes or your no about, um, you know, something that was related to work. And I, I don't want to kind of go into that specifically, but I know that this has been a, a process for you. Um, and I, I would love it if you would just be willing to share what what have you been finding about this, um, you know, kind of feeling into your weighing your your options what what has been let me ask it this way what has been one of your biggest challenges around finding your yes or your no i would say my biggest challenge is embracing the discomfort that comes along with finding your yes um it's inevitable you're going to find it but it's imperative if you want to live your best life and say more about the discomfort what do you mean by that what what is that for you so I think we're all set in our routines. Um, I think we tend to get comfortable in what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, even if it doesn't align with what we really want and what we really value. Um, and that just leads to a lot of discomfort. But on the other side, in order for you to change what you've been doing, you also have to face that discomfort. So either way, you're gonna face discomfort, but which form of the discomfort is going to lead to growth and lead to you being happy and fulfilled and living with purpose and living according to your values. Um, it's whatever you align with most. And so, yeah, it's, it's really been, it's really been about embracing that discomfort and understanding that it's just a part of the process. And it may not feel good at first, but over time, as you live more and more according to your values, that discomfort becomes less and less. Mm. Beautiful. And would you be willing to share a bit more vulnerably about what what your values are and what discomforts come up for you. So for me specifically, I value flexibility. I value my individuality and I value my time. Um, those are very important to me and I value my family. I value my friends. Um, I care a lot about people. Um, I very much on the other side, do not value authority. I don't value being told what to do. I don't value having things decided for me. And so over the last couple of months, I've been learning to shape my life as much as I can around those values of individuality, freedom, flexibility, and get away from that, that corporate hand, because I do work for corporate America. I try to get as much away from that corporate hand that tries to smash you down and tell you what to do and how to live your life from nine to five. And it's, it's been challenging. Um, you know, just to give an example, I'm driving home from the gym right now and it feels, it felt very discomforting leaving in the middle of the work day to go work out. But after I worked out I'm like, I'm so thankful that I got out, I exercised, I did something that's good for me, makes me feel good. And I'll go back and I'll work a little bit later tonight to make up for it. So it's discomforting, but it's very rewarding once you push through that initial discomfort. Yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. What, thank you. Um, so many things I could, I could follow up on that. So when, let's use this example of going to the gym. So, you know, making that decision has been something that has taken you a little bit of time to get to, to actually value that time for yourself and see how important it is, you know, for your, your mental health, your physical health, your sleep, um, you, you know, uh, 
just getting a break from work, probably even just getting out of the house, you know, your social um, needs that 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 one choice that you made that you you found your yes to do and it and it took so much for you to kind of you know decide I'm going to join the gym I'm going to drive to the gym middle of the day is when I'm going to do it you know all these choices you had to make in order to then include all of those values for yourself um, how did you do that how did you get to that you know how do yeah, it's a big, it's a, it seems so simple, but it's so inclusive of so much. I just got to a point where the discomfort of doing the same thing that I had been doing for so many years, it just became too much to bear. And so, you know, there's always the fear of the unknown or the fear of the loss of the known. I like that. I like phrasing that fear better. You're, you don't really, you can't really fear what you don't know, but you fear the loss of what you've known for so long. Um, and I just, I, I realized that this is just, if I want to have a chance of eliminating or greatly diminishing the discomfort that I face or I feel on a daily basis, I have to change the way I'm doing things. Okay. Yeah. So ultimately making that choice was, was a stepping into the fear of letting go of the known. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. So stepping into the fear, facing the fear of letting go of the known. Yeah. So the, the, Here's what I'd like to do with you, Andrew, if you'd be willing to. Um, we're going to do, do an exercise. So at this point, what would you say is your learning or growing edge? You know, if, if I'll explain what I mean by that um, after I say the whole kind of inquiry here. Um, but what would you say is the learning or growing edge of your uh, experience with the known. And what I mean by that is the learning and growing edge is that place where we, we, we bump up against it and we kind of go, mm, not, no go zone, you know, or we kind of lean up against it and we go like, mm, I think I'll, I'll eat instead, or I think I'll, uh, you know, go scroll on my phone or we, we just kind of like do something that's easier or more familiar or more comfortable would be the word. Um, or maybe it's kind of like we check out. So that, that leading edge requires us to be really present. And, 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 um, and there's something really edgy about that, right? So what, as I say that inquiry again, that I would love to hear from you, um, what would you say is your leading edge or your growing edge around your relationship to the known? Um, if I understood your question correctly, I mean, I think that there's varying levels of discomfort that we all face. Um, I also think that we're all a lot more intuitive that we can give ourselves credit for. And I think that deep down, if we listen to ourselves, we kind of know what, what is maybe stepping a little bit out of our comfort zone and what is going to lead to growth and what is maybe a bit too much and where we have to maybe dial back and take our foot off the gas a little bit. And I think we also know that there is a static level of discomfort from staying in the same place. So it's really about listening to yourself. It's really about thinking things through, but also feeling things through. And again, I think that we're all very intuitive on a fundamental level. And I think that we can all have a sense of when to push forward, when to pull back a little bit. I mean, that's really been my leading edge is just listening to myself, doing a lot of introspective work, feeling what's right thinking through things, thinking through all the options. Nice, nice. That's great. So, okay, so let's do this exercise. Okay, so when 
let's let's imagine let's use let's use something really um uh, kind of surface level i'm going to ask you a question um and you'll say yes or no and let it be the first thing that comes to your mind intuitively or to your your gut your heart whatever just pops into your your answer and so uh the the first question i'll ask is would you like to jump into a hot vat of oil no huh no no can i hear that again no okay uh would you like to jump in a freezing cold ice bath yes oh all right would you like to eat uh, a whole tub of ice cream? No. No. Nope. Nope. We got a nope. Uh, would you like to have a really fresh, amazing organic salad? Yes. Yes. Would you like to um, climb Machu Picchu sometime? No. No. Would you like to? uh go on a trip this year yes nice nice i felt that one okay so tell me why did i ask you that last question and why is that so exciting to me that you said yes that you want to go to it on a trip this year and i felt it so strongly that yes was such a full-on full yes and that's the exciting part to me why is that so exciting to me? Well, we've had our discussions about it. Um, I did have a trip, just to be candid with everyone, I did have a trip scheduled for last year that ultimately I had to cancel, and that was due to fear of a couple of things, two of which being getting on an airplane and the other one being away from my house for an extended period of time um, because I've been working remotely for so long and I've gotten so comfortable in my environment that I didn't, the thought of being away from that place of comfort was terrifying to me. And so through these last couple of months of exploration, I've really come full circle and I've learned to embrace that discomfort and see, see really through the forest of fear and realize that I do wanna go on a trip, whether that's with family, friends, both, myself, I want that experience. Um, so, so I'm on more at peace with that decision. That is awesome. I was, I was my whole body. I'm getting like chills running through my whole body right now through my arms. Yeah. So that's huge. Cause that was, when was that last year that you canceled that trip? Uh, that was August of last year. That was August of just 2022. Yes. And we, we met, was it end of August? It was tail end of August, early September. I think okay. it was September 1st, exactly, that we had our first and call. And so that, that was what caused you to reach out. You realized, okay, there's something going on here I need some help with. Absolutely. Yeah. And what was it in your mind? What did you say to yourself that was like, all right, it's time for me to reach out and I need to find someone? because it just seemed so unnatural that I didn't want to face the fear of going on a trip that was so exciting. It was to a tropical island. It was for a week. It was with family and a friend and one of my best friends. Um, it was all inclusive. I hadn't been on vacation in 15 years, 20 years. Like there was no reason, no good reason why I should have felt like I couldn't go and actually go ahead and cancel a trip like that. It just, it seems so unnatural and so unlike what so many other people would appreciate and thrive in and value. And it's just, I knew that there was something wrong. There was something that was incongruent with my values, what I truly wanted. And so that's why I reached out. Yeah. Yeah. And that impacted your family and your friends as well. Yeah. It did. Absolutely. I mean, they, they had to cancel their trip too. It wasn't just you right yeah yeah thank you for sharing that i really appreciate your vulnerability there and i'm coming back around to be like would you like to go on a trip this year 
Let me hear that again. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Can you feel it? I can feel it. <laughs> so I do feel it. You do feel it. And thank yeah. you. And I, I'm going to kind of like come out of our little container here for a moment and just say whoever's watching this. Um, so Andrew's sharing something that's, you know, really near and dear and vulnerable. And it's been a part of our process. And, you know, so much of what we've been doing is just is, is like, how do I trust myself? Right? How do I trust what's going on? And there's all these winky wonky things going on inside of me. And yet, and they're and I'm making choices based on them, right? And so how do we realign? Like you said in the beginning, you know, like if it's 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 like if that if that wheel is untrue, how do you get in there and start, you know, tightening up the spokes? And which spoke do you start tightening first, second, third, you know, like a, a, a professional spoke tightener or wheel truer? How do they, what do they call those people? I don't know, bike mechanic. They, they would go in and, and know, like they probably would do one here and then they probably do one exactly on the opposite end or something like there's some way, some, some framework that they would use to do that, right? And, and what would you say, what helped you, what was the framework that you, you, you can see that we kind of utilized here that helped you to start to true up your wheel of, of yes? It was just, it was constantly feeling discomfort and I, yeah, it, it was just feeling that discomfort, not wanting to feel it anymore, not wanting to do the same thing over and over again, not wanting to be stuck in a routine and in a rut and not living according to my values and what I care about most and what I want most out of this one life that we all get to live. So it's so I, valuable. And yet we let other people dictate uh -huh. how we live our lives. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so yeah, feeling that discomfort and, and so much of that discomfort for you was just kind of staying in a, in a box of, of how like your work was, was guiding you rather than kind of listening outside of that, that work, work box and what do I need? What do I want? Is that a big part of kind of what, what got you off hum of your own course? Humongous part. It was, it was almost like I was equating life with work. Uh -huh. It was almost like they were one in this name. Right. Okay. So you really actually started to go, the, 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 the discomfort was that you didn't, you couldn't actually feel yourself. Like there was no individuation in there. Exactly. It was like I was a cog in a machine with that machine just being work. Uh -huh. Okay. That was the discomfort. And so then when you listened to that discomfort, it helped you to maybe the opposite end of the wheel, the opposite spoke was the, the values. That Right. I had to get real honest with myself. I had to really do a lot of introspective work and look and feel and think within and just try to understand what am I here for? What am I, what is my life all about? What do I want out of this life? Hmm. What do you want out of this life? Family, friends, good health, wealth, nice. solid relationships, peace, mm -hmm. joy, fulfillment, purpose. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, thank you. So one, one other thing that I want to do here is um, kind, of, kind of explore with just one more aspect of this uh, making big choices. So when we make big choices, oftentimes, like you said, and probably more times than not, you know, we're, we're realizing that we need to take a different uh, path because something's uncomfortable or so uncomfortable that we have to make that that change right a lot of times there's just like a little bit of discomfort and we're fine to just keep keep you know on the hamster wheel but that 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 discomfort that that actually is the one thing that will make us make a shift um in if we kind of dig underneath that discomfort it like you know, like if the, if the soil level is, is the discomfort and then we go and we stick our hand into the dirt 
and get down like deep into the hummus layer, you know, where the roots are and kind of finger, finger the roots a little bit and, uh, and, and maybe even kind of dig ourselves in there like we're a little mole or something. So if you can just kind of feel yourself get in there and dig yourself in and go, okay, what are the roots underneath that discomfort for me? What would you say? What would you, what, what does it feel like in there? Let, and, and as you answer this, let this come from more of an intuitive, like I said, imagine you're that little mole. And it's this intuitive experience of being down there in the roots underneath all that discomfort that has caused you to, you know, keep, keep seeking change. What's that like? Mm. It's a tough question to answer. It's a, um, deeper, it's a deeper question. Yeah. Do it from your body. So as you do it, don't remember part of what we we've been practicing is don't do it from your head. Get, mm -hmm. get down, get down and down, down, down and let it come down here. Let it speak down from here. So what does it feel like to feel that discomfort? What's at the root of it? What's, what's get in there and really feel in there and just kind of hang out at the roots. And what do you notice? What do you see? What do you envision? What do you, what words do you hear? What qualities of, you know, is it cold? Is it wet? Is it dank? Is it, uh, what are the sensations? I think it's at first I felt as though discomfort was very nerve wracking is very anxiety producing. Um, it led to a lot of feelings of negativity and worry, um, uncertainty. What I am starting to come around to is that discomfort presents opportunity. It gives you feelings of opportunity that you're, body and your mind are telling you that something is out of alignment in your life and the discomfort is giving you the opportunity to explore where that's coming from and explore how you could fix it Thanks. if you don't feel that discomfort you have no you have no reason to improve or grow or change the way you've been doing things mm -hmm. Hmm. Can I use the word courage? Does it feel like you have courage when you go down in there? It certainly does now. In the beginning, it's very hard to see the courage in there. It is there, but it is very hard to see it. But over time, as you learn to understand yourself, understand how you think, understand how you feel, that courage becomes a lot more present within the discomfort. Oh, that's wonderful. I love that. That's a great culmination right there. Beautiful. I'm going to repeat what you said in my own words. Um, that's really resonating for me very strongly in my own body. And, and the way that I have experienced this, what you're saying, Andrew, is the more that I actually step into the unknown and, and get to like, uh, get to know the unknown, you know, like that, that deep, dark area, deep in the soil, the roots dark, you can't see in there. You know, if you're like, I don't know if moles can see or whatever, but they get in there and they're just like whiskers, you know, <laughs> and feeling their way through their whiskers. And it feels like that to me, it's like, we're, we're stepping into the unknown sort of just with our, some other kind of feelers out there pulling in information and it's our intuitive sense and it requires a ton of courage because we are blind and, 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 and our blind spots are, are real in those instances, right? And so it's, it, in the truest sense, it's about getting to know ourselves and how we navigate the unknown and, and finding that, that place of courage as we do actually the navigation as we navigate and and each time we we turn and we adjust and we we decide to look around and stop and enjoy the roses and 
uh, whatever it is that we're deciding, ultimately, the choices that we make along that path, the more, um, the more present, I'm going to bring this back around and create a full circle here that the more present we are um, in, in our bodies, the more embodied we are, the more we're able to actually feel and experience, um, the more able we are to make clear, aligned choices. Like you said, you use that word aligned. And, and the idea being that when we are in our center, boom, you know, whether it's our heart center, our gut center, our pelvic center, or even our head center, right? Depending on what kind of choice we're making, um, which of these intelligences are required in order to make those choices, um, you know, is depended on, on the choice, on the area. And the idea is when we're aligned, we're, when we're in that center, whichever one that's required, that's usually when we can, we can feel that, that yes, that hundred percent yes or no, right? And that's what's going to guide us. And, and each time we make a decision, each time we make a choice, we, that, that is fully aligned. We develop our character, we develop our sense of self, we develop our individuation in ways that, you know, maybe we just hadn't yet before. We were all on a different kind of individuation path. I mean, there's some children who are, you know, amazing. Like they're, I met this little two-year-old who was, you know, raised by this beautiful farmer and she was incredible. You know, her language is incredible. Her, her sense of yes was incredible. So it's really not an age-related developmental thing. It just depends on kind of where we are in our journey and, and we are developing. No doubt about it, that's what we're here to do is develop our sense of self, but, but in connection, right? You and I were talking about this the other day that in connection with others. And, and that is how we get the reflection when, when, when we, you know, we're, we're dancing with another human or our company or whatever the other is, then we're getting to make those choices. And it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a we dance. We get to find what like, oh, you want to, well, okay, this is what I want to do. Okay. Do we want to cooperate? How do we want to do this? And, oh, this is what I'm feeling, but, oh, that's what you're needing. And we're constantly pulling all of that into this uh, experience of, of being in connection, not only with ourselves and our truth, but in connection with others and, and our impact on, on others and others impact on us and how we communicate that. So I always have to stop myself when I get to a certain point because I could keep rolling. Um, Andrew, is there anything else that you want to say? You, you have this beautiful knack of putting a, a, tying a bow on things as well and a cherry on top. Anything you want to say as we close up here? Yeah, I would say that whatever choice you make, you're never going to know 100% whether it's the right choice or not until you've made it. That's just a fact. You'll, you'll make the wrong decisions. You'll make plenty of right decisions. Um, but listen to yourself. Don't just think things through, feel things through and feel into your intuition. I think we're all as human beings, a lot more intuitive than we give ourselves credit for. And so if we just give ourselves the opportunity to both listen to ourselves, feel into ourselves and think into ourselves, we will make more right decisions than wrong decisions that will allow us to live our best lives. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I think I want to add to that, that there are no wrong decisions. And on the same exact vein of what you just said, that we don't really know how a decision is going to impact us or how we're going to feel until we make it. And it's that courageous action of stepping into that decision to, in order to have that experience in that 
and, and, and now that becomes part of the known, right? And so as long as we're not harming anyone, I mean, these are kind of my rules, you know, like be kind um, if, if you have, you know, a choice you need to make and it's going to impact someone, be kind, be gentle, right? That, so it's a nonviolent approach, of course, um, just, just to lay that down. Um, very, very important, right? And, and that means being nonviolent towards ourselves, which is, is sort of overlooked. <laughs> a lot of times that we, we have a lot of inner violence that can happen. So it's very, very important to be kind to ourselves as well. And, and that there aren't wrong choices and we can get into sort of like overthinking it, way overthinking it. Would you agree? Yeah, I would absolutely agree. And I'll, I'll caveat. So there are no wrong decisions, but there, you may make a decision that ultimately doesn't align with your values. Like to give a silly example, I had a pastry last night that I thought about, I was like, do I want to eat this? Cause I'm trying to lose weight for the summer. Do I want to eat this? I I'll enjoy it in the moment, but I may not enjoy how I feel afterwards. I may feel a little bit of guilt. I ultimately did. And Whereas it's not the wrong decision, it maybe doesn't align with my values and what I want in the future, but it's not the wrong decision. It's, you know, I enjoyed the dessert that I had and you take that information and maybe you make a different decision tomorrow. And maybe you decide not to have dessert tomorrow, or maybe you decide that you only have dessert once a week or once a month or whatever the case is, no matter what, the decisions you make give you information and every decision is valuable. It's just maybe some don't align with your value system and you find that out as you go along. I love it. Thanks for the caveat. Beautiful conversation, Andrew. And thank you for doing this with me and being so vulnerable. And uh, I look forward to being with you in our next conversation. I'm going to sign us off here and, and yeah, just saying thank you. Absolutely. I really enjoyed this conversation. Me too. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there that, you know, any of you that have watched this, um, our intention is to share some of what happens in our, um, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with beautiful people like Andrew and yourself. And, and we also, we have a small group um, that really gets in and supports each other as well. So if you are interested at all in working with me, please go ahead and just send me a message. Um, on Facebook, or um, you can go ahead and contact me directly as well at jenna at healalaska.com. Alrighty, ciao for now. Bye, Andrew. All right, take care.